Welcome, everybody, to the test run of a new studio day. And by new, I mean that I moved the couch to a different side of the room. What's up? What do you think about it? Anyway... In this trial run for the new Studio Day Heifer, I want to talk to you about the Cowboys news of the day, which includes the great John Michaud at The Athletic put out his projected depth chart for the Cowboys. Now, the fun part about this is that the Cowboys say you can't report at practice on who's running with the first team or who's running with the second team. And is it pretty dumb? Yeah, it's pretty dumb. But coaches are paranoid. It's kind of what they do. So a lot of this stuff I think we already know. I mentioned, I believe, in the last video, the starting offensive line. Connor Williams has been getting a bunch of snaps uh, at center and some with the first team, even in preseason games, which I'm sure you guys have seen, but that is not what they're going to do. Connor Williams will be the left guard. He will, I guess, be the backup center, but Connor will be your left guard. Biotish will be your starting center. Tyron Smith, Lyle Collins, Zach Martin. I know I didn't go left to right, so if you're not watching in video form, left to right. Tyron Smith, uh, Connor Williams, Tyler Biotish, Zach Martin, Lyle Collins. Bang, 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 bang. Speaking of Lyle Collins, he was pulled out of practice with something shouldery, necky, but unlike when guys get really hurt when they get really hurt eventually the coach is like hey go get treatment go get it diagnosed and he did not have that so it's going to be something minor Lyle Collins is going to be just fine everybody knows who the starting wide receivers are Amari Cooper CeeDee Lamb Michael Gallup although I do want to throw in a nugget about the wide receivers here in just a second but those will be your starting wide receivers uh your tight end because Schultz is now hurt so is McEwen uh, Schultz is working back in though. So that's the wild card is it's still Blake Jarwin versus Dalton Schultz. And I guess my opinion on that kind of teeter totters, depending on who's practiced lately, the practice at the star, Blake Jarwin made some really big plays that one. I'll say the starter doesn't matter and they're both going to play plenty, but I'll call Jarwin the starter. Uh, and Dak Prescott is your starting quarterback. And then of course, Zeke. Uh, on the wide receivers, there is something I want to point out. It's very rare I'm going to talk fantasy football here unless there's a giant market for it. But I was looking at ESPN Plus put out their tiers of wide receivers for fantasy football purposes, and I was flipping through it just because I wanted to see what they were going to do with the Cowboys wide receivers. Well, tier three is where they put CeeDee Lamb. Tier five is where they put Amari Cooper. And man, I think we are going crazy with uh, Amari Cooper, maybe not even disrespect, but overlooking. Amari's going to get 140 targets or 150 or 160. He's going to get a whole bunch of targets. I'm a big CeeDee Lamb believer. The dude's going to be a monster. He may put up the best stats on this Cowboys team. He may. I don't know that he's the favorite to do that. Uh, I don't ever condone drafting people that you're – that are on your actual team that you cheer for in fantasy football. But Amari Cooper might be an exception if he really is dropping and dropping and dropping. Like, yeah, his feet hurt, and he walks weird. But when he steps out there and when he practices, he's still absolutely incredible. He's a real-life number one receiver. Uh, If you can get him later in fantasy drafts, tear it up. Okay, Cowboys defense, depth chart. Right now, with Neville Gallimore hurt, the guy who looks like he will start for the Cowboys if nothing changes, if there's no free agent additions, anything like that, it looks like it's going to be Oso Digizua, your third-round rookie. So your defensive tackles would likely be, when you start a game, Oso Digizua and Carlos Watkins would be your one-technique nose tackle. At defensive end, you know it's Randy Gregory, you know it's Demarcus Lawrence. That's what the defensive line would look like on the first play of a real game. That's what it would look like. At linebacker, this is not just me anymore. This is the whole world. This is everybody who's watching practice. I saw Clarence Hill tweet out earlier that Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch will be playing special teams. So if that is a thing, it's a thing for a reason. It's because they are not the starters. The starters at linebacker for this team, and maybe it doesn't mean the first snap of the game. But the guys who are going to play the most, Micah Parsons, Keanu Neal. The guy who's going to play the third most is probably Leighton Van Der Esch. The guy who's going to play the fourth most is Jalen Smith. So that is real life. That is what's going to happen for the Cowboys. In the secondary, 
Anthony Brown and Trevon Diggs on day one look like they'll be the starters. And when you're a nickel and you have a third corner on the field, John Machota, the machine gun, the machete, is actually projecting Maurice Kennedy, not Jordan Lewis, to be the slot corner. And I think it's fine either way. Uh, But I do think Kennedy has earned the right for that to be a real conversation and a real battle because Maurice Kennedy has had an outstanding camp. Your safeties are going to be Donovan Wilson and DeMonte Casey. Only question after that is which other safeties make the roster. Malik Hooker? Yeah, I believe he's going to make the roster. Outside of that, J. Ron Curse, Darian Thompson, Israel Mukwamu. Those guys are probably all competing for one roster spot. So there is that. As far as Dak Prescott, he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. The problem is Mike McCarthy and his words. And I'm not the McCarthy hater. I'm not the one who calls him the gym coach. That's brought us and Gavin Dawson, a bunch of haters. Uh, I kind of like Mike McCarthy. I think when he talks, some of the things that he talks about, I dig it. Oh, I was talking about Dak, though. He's going to be fine. The only big problem with Dak is that Mike McCarthy said two or three days initially. So when you've said that, and now it's been weeks and weeks, hey, dog, don't move. You're moving the camera for crying out loud. Uh, Then everybody's going to freak out because now you've lied to us, which is something that NFL teams love to do, whether it's lying or whether it's just um, maybe the coach didn't have the full scope of the way that they were going to handle the injury. He just knew what it could be because – If Dak felt that in his shoulder on a Monday of a game week, he'd play the game that week. They'd shoot him up. Uh, But you're going to be careful with your starting quarterback. The preseason doesn't matter. Zeke's not going to play in the preseason either because Mike McCarthy knows that he's got a billion miles on him and there's no point in taking any hits right now. Just get to the regular season. That's what you want to do with your quarterback. That's what you want to do with your running back. Totally cool with it. Not worried about Dak. Back to Mike McCarthy. I think he has everything that I want the Cowboys head coach to have, or at least most of what I want the Cowboys head coach to have. I don't know that he's a great speech giver. I think he's just meh at that. But the things that I hear him talking about when he addresses the media or whether it's on hard knocks or whatever, is he talks about the things that I want my head coach to know. My problem with Jason Garrett is he once said, I don't need analytics in game. Like it's not something I need. But McCarthy in his presser the other day, He was talking about a magic number, 2.3 seconds, because that's how long it takes for most NFL plays. And he was talking about how there's a reason they do their scramble drills, where they'll have the quarterback drop back and they'll run their initial routes, but the quarterback's not allowed to throw yet. He has to then roll out, and then we're scramble drilling, and then we'll figure out how the play's going to end. And they work on it a lot for a reason. Because you're going to make or break yourself on Sunday on what happens on plays that are outside of structure. Plays that take more than 2.3 seconds. It's where quarterbacks make mistakes and it's where quarterbacks make big plays. So that's such an important thing. And to hear him hammering on 2.3, 2.3, 2.3 and the GPS on the players. What is their workload every day? Like Mike McCarthy is hip to the analytical side of this. Kellen Moore gets to run the offense, which I like. Dan Quinn runs the defense, which I like. So what do I want my head coach to do? In-game management, call timeouts, know when to go for it on fourth down, know what matters for when we're practicing, know what the numbers say about football. And Mike McCarthy, for all the crap that people give him, he brings those things, and I like those things. Is there anything else I want to get through? Amari Cooper, he's back in practice, and he looks great. Uh... C.D. Lamb's goals, yeah, C.D. Lamb's goals, he won't even say out loud, which means that they're very, very big. I wouldn't be surprised if C.D. was expecting to go out there and get 1,500 yards. Backup quarterback. I think they're good with Gilbert. It's just a matter of does something crazy happen or what becomes available when teams have to cut down to 53. For example, Pittsburgh right now has Roethlisberger, Mason Rudolph, Dwayne Haskins, Josh Dobbs. I'm not a fan of Dobbs. I don't love Rudolph either, but like if Dwayne Haskins were a guy that got released, am I interested in that? Sure. I'm interested in that. So maybe there will be a quarterback situation around the league that will give them an opportunity to look at somebody different. But I would tell you, get ready for Garrett Gilbert to be the backup. It looks like that's what it's going to be. And I go back and forth, but for the most part, I'm cool with that. Dog, you're not, you're, stop it. Stop it. 
The dog's laying on the ground up against the computer, which pushes things around. For the most part, I'm cool with Garrett Gilbert as the backup because uh, backup quarterbacks are bad in the league. And depending on when you're watching him, he didn't have a great game last time out, but he had a good practice inside the star. He had a great practice against the Rams. Um, I think he looks fine. If your starter missed three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, you're going to go somewhere between three and two and two and three, and you can probably survive if you have a capable defense. So that's your Cowboy stuff of the day from the new studio day, Heffrey, where I'm finding out that I'm about to figure out a way to keep the dog from laying right there. Isn't that right, sweet girl? Leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow. Um, Leave in the comments if you could have any poster. These little guys here, I've got Gandalf, Cloud Strife, Andre 3000, and Doc Holliday's over there somewhere. Uh, If you could have anything on a poster behind you, what would it be? Remember that you have no idea what anybody's going through, so be cool to everybody. I love you. Bye.